Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of Lee College, our Board of Regents, faculty, staff, and students, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you here today to recognize these young men and women that are in front of me who today will be receiving their Lee College certificates and associate degrees. 
We just couldn't be prouder of what you have accomplished. We're going to have a lot of applause during the ceremony, so let's start it off right away. Let's give them a round of applause. So this morning, I uh, just go ahead and be seated for a moment. Platform guests, please be seated. So I tried this this morning and it didn't work too well, so I'm going to try it again this afternoon. I'm looking out and I see a number of vacant seats, and I see a lot of folks up around on our walking track. I would encourage you, um, please feel free to come down the steps and find a seat. It'll be a lot more comfortable for the next two hours um, if you're seated. Um, and there are plenty of seats as I look around, but they're just sporadically located. So please, I encourage you to do that. I would also encourage you, if you're at the ends, please, please help us by moving in a little bit, and that will help us to make sure we can get everybody seated properly. To start our ceremony, I would like to invite up to the podium Ms. Brenna Louise Sally, who is going to do our Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation by Daniela Marie Ramirez. Brenna and Daniela, please come forward. And now we will say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, sorry, let everybody stand up first. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Thank you all. Please bow your heads and join me in prayer. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we rejoice today over the wonderful accomplishments of discipline, determination, and self-sacrifice that have led to this graduation day. It has been a great gift from you that we are able to learn from experts and teachers in our chosen field, and that we are now prepared to give of ourselves in service in many different areas. May the skills we have developed, managing our time, setting priorities, and keeping focus during exams be the foundation on which we build successful careers and lives. As we hear our own names spoken aloud today and receive diplomas and certificates of accomplishment, let us also hear your voice, for we need purpose and direction in our lives. Today we celebrate finishing a chapter in our own history. I pray that we may continue from this day forward to create outstanding stories that surround us every day and in all places we may find ourselves. And so we thank you, Lord, for bringing the graduates, along with friends and family, together on such a glorious occasion. Amen. I would ask everyone, because of the importance of our occasion today, if you have brought with you a cell phone, if you would put it on silent. However, I'd also invite you, if you happen to be on Facebook, if that's something that you do, um, go to Facebook. Uh, because you're in our arena, Lee College's Facebook page will show up. And if you will check in, everybody you know is going to know that you're at this fabulous, wonderful commencement ceremony. It's my pleasure this afternoon to introduce to you the Board of Regents, Mr. Ron Haddix, who is our chair, and he would like to share some comments with you. Mr. Haddix. Thank you, Dr. Brown. To the group, I say welcome. Regents, President of the Cabinet, faculty, staff, and ladies and gentlemen. To our graduates, we say congratulations. To the parents, spouse, children, and friends of our graduates, we say thank to you for all your support and encouragement. We applaud you and appreciate all the help. 
As you know, Lee College has a tradition of over 80 years of excellence in education. This tradition is based upon the lifeblood of, of our college, which of course is our faculty. So at this time, would you please join me in thanking the faculty of Lee College with a round of applause. Thank you. This time I'd like to offer congratulations in addition to our regular uh, graduation here to our fourth uh, class of Impact Early College High School graduates. This is really something and I want to tell you, you, you folks have, have accomplished great things already and we know that you will continue to do so and we applaud you. Commencement ceremonies are one of the reasons that I enjoyed being a regent uh, of the Lee College Board for so long because to come out here and see all of these smiling faces and know that all of you have received a good education and that you're going on without the debt that most students have after they complete two years of college. It's, uh, it's really exciting to know that. <clears throat> To our graduates, you arrived here today because of what you have accomplished. And although this is the commencement of your achievement, it is also the beginning of the next stage of your beginning in, the, in your quest of your personal, educational, and career goals. You're off to a great start, and you will make significant impact in many people's life in the future. Best wishes to all of you from the Lee College Board of Regents. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Haddix. I also want to express on behalf of all of us here at Lee College a special appreciation for Ron Haddix. He is finishing 18 years on the Lee College Board of Regents and is now stepping down, but he has been a very, very important and integral part of the leadership for this institution. Mr. Haddix, thank you very, very much. Well, graduates, it's, it's that time. You've worked hard, you certainly have earned it, but you know what, I don't think there's one of you that if I were to pause for a moment and have a conversation that would tell me you did it all by yourself. Certainly, the faculty were an integral part of your completion of your program of study. And we have a stellar faculty here at Lee College. Very talented, very educated, and very student-centered. In addition to our faculty, there are some other folks that are in the arena today who have made a difference in your lives in little ways and maybe in very, very big ways. So graduates, let's take a moment, if you would stand, if we get all the graduates up. If you do, turn around. Let's thank all of those folks who helped you arrive at this commencement ceremony. be seated. Some, sometimes we think that when we complete something that, that is, we're done. The fact of the matter is education is never finished. We will be educating ourselves throughout our lives in different ways. Some of you as you leave here will be moving into the workforce and you will be a part of the economy that makes this region, our state, and our country as great as it is. But you will always, in the workforce, continue to educate yourself. Some of you will leave here today and you'll be heading off to a university, working on a bachelor's degree, master's, and for some of you a doctoral degree. And even after that, you'll still, throughout your lives, be continuing to learn, to become knowledgeable, and certainly to share that with others. So truly, it's not the end today, it's the beginning. It's the beginning of the next phase of your life, and it's an exciting one. 
And these are one of those important milestones today that you will cherish forever, as you should, because it's a very, very important part of who you are and where you're going. I like to think of our graduates as trailblazers, because for you, you set the path for others that will follow you, whether it be members of your family, friends, or others. You have shown them it can be done, and you did it. And now they may find that your path is one that they also want to follow. So thank you, graduates, for doing that, not only for yourself, but for those who will be coming after you. I want to encourage all of you to become an active member of the Lee College Alliance. The Lee College Alliance is our alumni association. When you leave here today, as you exit the arena, you will receive a one-year free membership to the Lee College Alliance. I really do hope that you'll take advantage of that. I hope that you'll be active in it, network with other graduates, and continue to be a very, very important part of the fabric of this beautiful and wonderful institution that belongs to you and belongs to everybody that's here today and everybody in our region that Lee College serves. We have some very, very special guests on the platform today, and it's my privilege to introduce them. And I'm going to do them in a couple of different groups. And what I'd like to do is ask everybody if they'd let me go ahead and introduce the groups individually. And then we'll give them a round of applause, and then we'll move on to the next group. So I want to begin on to my right, on the front row here. We have um, some important folks. As Mr. Haddix mentioned, we have some um, Impact Early College High School students that will be graduating today. I always, Melissa, Melissa, I'm sorry I have to do it. She knows what I'm going to say. I always love to do this in May because you guys know you haven't gotten your high school diplomas yet, yet have you? But three weeks before you get your high school diploma, we're already giving you your two-year associate degree from college. Can you believe that? Whoa! I think if I don't stop doing that, they're going to change your graduation to a week before we graduate you. Anyways, Dr. Melissa Duarte, Associate Superintendent from Goose Creek Schools, is here today to help celebrate with all of our graduates and, of course, with the Impact Early College High School. So thank you, Melissa. We also have on the front row, which I'll more formally introduce to you in a moment, our commencement speakers. You guys are in luck today because you don't have one commencement speaker. You actually have two. It's kind of rare to have two, but you're going to enjoy what they're going to share with you today. And they're known as red and black. And I'll give you more information about them in a moment. So let's give those folks a round of applause. Our grand marshal today, um, who arrived on the stage first, is Dr. Dale Adams. And Dr. Adams is um, a longtime employee faculty member of Lee College. And as senior faculty, um, he has the opportunity at each of our graduations to bring to the stage the MACE. And so, Dr. Adams, thank you. Next to Dr. Adams, um, we have Dr. Keith Coburn, who's a member of the Board of Regents. And then we have um, Mr. Haddix, who spoke to us a moment ago. And then Mr. Pete Alfaro, who is also a member of our Board of Regents. And so let's give them a round of applause. Of course, with anything, whether it be an edu educational institution or a business, you have to have some talented folks to make it work well, and we have exactly that. It starts with our faculty, and we also have some very special folks that are on the platform who serve as our senior administrators for Lee College, working with faculty, working with our staff, and working with you, our graduates. And so I'd like to introduce them. If you'll allow me to introduce them, if they'll stand when I say their name, and then we'll give them a round of applause at the conclusion. Chief Information Officer is Dr. Carolyn Lightfoot. Dean of Applied Sciences, Leighton Childress. Vice President of Student Affairs, Dr. Donetta Souchon. Vice President of Finance and Administration, Mr. Steve Evans. Assistant Registrar, Mr. Carl, Dr. Carl Husband. 
Interim Vice President of Instruction, D.D. Griffith. Interim Dean of Academic Studies, Dr. David Jarefjeski. David's not with us today because his daughter is graduating right now at Texas A&M University. So congratulations, David. Executive Director of Institutional Research, Effectiveness and Planning, Dr. Michael Fleming. And our Executive Vice President, Dr. Christina Ponce. Let's give them a round of applause. Not on the stage, um, but a very, very important to this institution are our assembly presidents and also our student government association president. And I know Karen Guthmiller, who serves as our assembly president, was here this morning and we recognized her, but we do thank very much uh, Karen's work for the last two years in leading the faculty. Scott Bennett is uh, president of our administrative assembly. Uh, Scott, unfortunately, was not able to be here. He's down at the University of Houston, Victoria, getting his master's degree. So congratulations to uh, Scott. And then Chris McClure, who I see Chris right back there. There's Chris waving his hand. Uh, Chris is our uh, president of our staff assembly. So thank you very much uh, to all three of these great, great employees. And then this morning, we had the opportunity to um, say goodbye to the president of the Student Government Association, Kyle Diamond who graduated at our 10 a.m. ceremony. So, Kyle, great job. Now, usually at this point in the assembly, um, I do something kind of like a personal privilege, you know? I have the microphone, so I'm gonna do it. I always like to take a moment to introduce someone who's been very important in my life, uh, both as my wife, but also as my colleague, as we both, for over 40 years, have been involved in education as teachers um, and as administrators and for so ever, ever long, our parents thought as students, never thinking it was going to end. And so I'd like to introduce my wife, Dr. Darlene Brown, who is in the back. Thank you, Darlene. I'd now like to introduce, reintroduce Dr. Melissa Duarte, Associate Superintendent for Goose Creek School District. Um, and she's going to share some words regarding our impact early college high school students. Melissa? I'd like to start off by thanking you for allowing me to share this special occasion with you. It's my honor to be here today to celebrate our Goose Creek CISD students who have earned a two-year degree through our early college high school and strong partnership with Lee College. As Dr. Brown has said, we do have 71% of our seniors from Impact Early College High School graduating today with an associate's degree several weeks prior to earning their high school diploma. So we are very proud of them. I'd like to take a moment to recognize two individuals that helped make this happen. Our early college high school principal, Laura Reyes, if you'll please stand and be recognized. And our academic dean, Richard Smith. Our students have worked hard to get here today, and many of them with life circumstances as well as work and family commitments that have made obtaining an associate's degree a more difficult journey. And yet, despite those obstacles, they did it while still in high school, completing their high school requirements at the same time as earning a two-year college degree. That's absolutely outstanding. And students, you should take great pride in this accomplishment. Your perseverance to pave your own road to success is admirable and has made you a role model for those who will follow in your footsteps. 
You are a shining example of what today's students can achieve through hard work, commitment to their education, a desire to succeed with the support of caring teachers and administrators who have a passion for developing children into productive adults. It's pretty inevitable that anyone who is fortunate enough to speak at a graduation ceremony will have at least a few words of advice. So here is mine. Keep learning. Learning doesn't just end when your school days are behind us. We learn to take care of ourselves. We learn to take care of each other. We learn to take care of our community. We learn how to care for our planet. We learn that when we fail, and at some point we all fail at something, to learn from that too. We learn that our experiences, both good and bad, help shape us into the people we ultimately become. My sincerest hope is that you become a lifelong learner. It will help you achieve the goals you set for yourself. Whether you will be using your associate's degree to enter the workforce, or if you'll be continuing on to a four-year program, you have already demonstrated through your hard work that you know and have what it takes to be a success in any of your future endeavors. Be proud of your accomplishment and carry it with pride. Feel honored. There are not many moments like this in life and it's important to treasure the moment. It is a moment to remember. You've earned it. My congratulations and best wishes to each and every one of you. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Dr. Duarte. As you can see around the arena, we are completely full. We do have some folks that are in an overflow room that are watching the ceremony on a monitor there. I want to thank those folks for their understanding and their patience, and you are just as much a part of this ceremony today as if you were right in this room. Well, it's very common at commencement ceremonies to have a commencement speaker, and so we have a treat for you. Let me tell you who we have, and they're going to share some insights that are very, very exciting and very different from typically what you may have heard. Red, a.k.a. Tina Pennington, and Black, a.k.a. Mandy Williams. They're sisters. Red and Black are sisters, both born in New York, raised in the same house by the same parents. But if you know them, that's where the similarities end. After getting a degree in theater arts from Wake Forest University in North Carolina, Red moved back with her parents until she married a very outgoing Englishman and followed his career around the globe. Her prior career had been a full-time mom, but her husband was getting fired. And that was the catalyst which forced her to face reality and take control. Red, who likes to refer to herself as simply mortal, initially thought she was stupid because she was 40 plus years old and had managed to avoid learning many of life's important lessons. But she soon realized that she had merely been sheltered Although she considers herself first and foremost a warm and fuzzy mother, Red is also an author, columnist, and keynote speaker. Black, on the other hand, is all business. Black has an economics degree from Wilkes College, now Wilkes University in Pennsylvania, and an MBA in international finance from New York University and the London School of Business. She retired from the oil and gas industry by the time she was 40, and when boredom sank in, started racing cars. First Porsches, then Ferraris, and along the way raised over a million dollars for Make the Wish Foundation. When her sister's husband got fired, she turned her, her sister's crisis into a book, a brand, and a business venture. Besides being the first woman to race the road course at Indianapolis, Black is an entrepreneur, a publisher, an author, a columnist, and also a keynote speaker. Their best-selling book, What I Learned About Life When My Husband Got Fired, 
was written as the basis of a sitcom and launched by Neiman Marcus. But, as they will explain, there have been many detours on their way to Hollywood. Please help me welcome Red and Black. Thank you. Am I on? Thank you, Dr. Brown. Um, you may be asking yourselves, well, who are these two women and why are they here? And I will confess, um, I've asked myself that same question. Um, our book was intended as the basis of a sitcom, so I'm going to start by letting my sister explain who the sitcom characters are. Well, I am Red, um, warm and fuzzy mom, as Dr. Brown said. I went to Wake Forest, um, phenomenal university, but unlike all of you, I did it more as continuing education, didn't really think much about it, and was definitely not a degree with a purpose, if you would, because I really just wanted to be a mom. Now my sister, on the other hand, she left home when she was 16 to go off to university, mind you. She had her MBA by the time she was 21. And she retired from here in Houston in the oil and gas industry by the time she was 40. Fast forward, um, I'm 40 plus years old. I've lived all around the world, but I'm now here in Houston. Life is great. Um, until a rainy Friday afternoon when my husband totally unexpectedly comes home and instead of telling me how he conquered the business world, instead he said, oh, by the way, dear, I got fired today. I absolutely panic, but I do what anybody would do. I turn to my big sister. And I just want two things, that's it, two things. A little bit of sympathy and some answers. Tell me what to do. Instead, she asks me lots and lots of questions. And instead, she does what she still does to this day, which is make me think about things. Well, the reality of it is she was 40 plus years old. She'd gone from living with our parents to living with her husband. And so I thought it was time that she grow up. And so that's what I told her she needed to do. And at the time, she even had the audacity to tell me, oh, this is going to end up being the best thing that ever happened to you. So at the very beginning, we start with an obvious thing if your husband's fired, personal finance. Trust me, that did not go very well. Um, that's probably an understatement. Um, I asked her if she had any financial statements, and the woman panicked. That theater degree, she started using it. And she said, I can't do this. She goes, I, I was no good at math. And I reminded her she was a straight A student, which meant she obviously got an A in math. And she goes, well, I didn't like math. Now, there's a huge difference between not liking something and not being able to do it. So probably with a little bit of sarcasm, I asked her, well, can you add and subtract? And when she acknowledged she could, I said, OK, we can move forward. I then made the huge mistake of using the terms assets and liabilities and told her we were going to discuss those. She totally freaked out on me. So I told her to calm down. I did that a lot with my sister. I still, still do. do. Um, and I said, we're going to talk about things you own and money you owe. And she goes, well, I can do that. I just can't do assets and liabilities. I said, that was the definition. She was like, oh. But at that moment, I realized it was the terminology that was creating the problem. That she was creating roadblocks in her mind thinking she couldn't do something without even trying. I also realized about the same time that she probably was not the only person in this situation. So I saw a business opportunity and I decided to turn her crisis into a book. So during my crisis, we start with personal finance. But as you can imagine, it's one sister turning to another. So it soon becomes life 101, if you would. You know, I'm asking for advice, thoughts, tell me what to do, relationships, time management, stress, you name it, I'm asking her about it. And it wasn't until I looked over at her one day and I see that she's taking notes that she told me how this was all going to make this great book. Well, what are sisters for? Oh, wrong direction. Directionally challenged. Okay, so um, I started researching publishing. My background's oil and gas. I knew nothing about publishing. I hate to break the news to all of you. Um, when you graduate, homework doesn't end. You just start calling it research. So I started researching the publishing industry, which is actually part of entertainment. And I realized that all successful sitcoms 
were relationship-based. So the book was structured and was intended as a sitcom. But things did not quite go as planned because life rarely does. But I'm really directionally challenged today. Okay, so the book was launched by Neiman Marcus. Um, that photo is uh, the mannequins they had in the window in the Galleria that looked like us, and they had a stand next to them for the um, press photo, and I like to tell everyone to check out the dummies in the window. But instead of going to Hollywood, let's see if I can get this right. Woohoo, okay. Um, we detoured into the world of education. And if that's not a strange enough detour, we then went to prison. Well, our book went to prison. Um, and we're now in over 30% of the Texas prisons. So how are we able to shift between such different worlds? I mean, we start with a sitcom, Neiman Marcus, education, criminal justice. And there, uh, trust me, there are days I can't even figure out how we did all of that. But of course, Black, you know, being my big sister, pointed out how it was we were able to do this. And she goes, I can sum it up in two words, soft skills. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And it was then that she said, soft skills. It's things like our ability to, for critical thinking, problem solving, communications, uh, teamwork. She goes, that's how we were able to do such different things. And the funny thing is that it reminded me of my corporate days when I was in management in oil and gas because we could teach our employees technical side, but what we were desperate for was for them to have the soft skills. And it really doesn't matter what the soft skills are when you stop and think about it, that word that I like to use with you, is that we use them not only in the workforce, but we use them every day in our lives. And to kind of explain that, I want to just tell you a real quick story. So I'm in the middle of my crisis, and I'm using that theater degree because I'm really busy freaking out all the time. And at one point, I tell her, well, of course you know how to do all these things. You know, you have an MBA. You worked in the corporate world. You know, you have all this business experience. Of course you have all these skills, these soft skills. And it's then that she goes, well, no, you have them too. Now, at first, I'm thinking she's being nice. Then I realize my sister, she doesn't do nice. And then she points out to me that you may think of yourself as just a mom. She goes, but look at you in any given day. I mean, you're, you're resolving conflicts. You're having to communicate with all different people. You're having to manage people, you know, even me. And she goes, and let's face it, kids, they know how to negotiate. She goes, so you actually have all these soft skills? Just never really thought about it in the context of me being just a mere mortal mom. So your favorite slide coming up? No. Yeah. No? Nope. Yes. There you go. Okay, <laughs> that's my sister's favorite slide. Um, and that to me is my if I only knew then what I know now slide. When my sister said this was going to be the best thing that ever happened to me, I thought she was truly crazy. I mean, I know this woman can put a spin on anything, but really a positive spin on what to date was the worst crisis in my life. But then as things developed, personal finance, wow, you don't need an MBA. Um, soft skills, you don't need corporate experience, you can have these skills, these strengths and weaknesses. And it made me realize, as much as I hate to say it, because she is my big sister, she was right. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. And it wasn't just for me, it was once I learned these things and I more likely thought about these things and understood for my daughters, Natasha and Sawyer. And then in the years since, all the people we've come across and all the students we've talked to, it was the best thing that ever happened to me. Okay, this is about as long as I can go without talking about racing. This is the road course at um, Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I was the first woman to run the road course there. I did not find out till two years later. So my 15 seconds of fame and glory came and went. So now everybody like you are stuck hearing that I was the first woman to race the road course at Indianapolis. Now this track map has a bunch of notes on it. Those notes were made before I ever got to Indy. It's that homework never ends concept. Uh, there's no way I can go to a track I have never raced at before and expect to learn every corner in a race weekend. If you look at the track map, across the top is the front straight. Physics tells me that a car goes fastest in a straight line. The corner that leads onto the front straight is the most important corner. If I can get through that corner, I can be on full throttle sooner, and it'll improve my lap time, which helps me in qualifying. 
Also, if I pass somebody on that first corner, we're in comparable cars, same size engine. They can't pass me back. So that is the most important corner. About midway through the track map, you see the second longest corner, the second longest straight. That corner is the second most important corner for all the same reasons. Then on the left side, I don't know my right from my left, I apologize. Um, you see, like, looks like the S's, the squiggles. They're actually the most fun on the entire track. You're on slicks, the tires get sticky, you throw the car one way, you throw the car the other way, you really feel like you know what you're doing. The reality of it is I could go through there as fast as a pro or as slow as a beginner. And it really wouldn't matter because it's short, it's slow, it has almost no impact on my track time and you can't pass. And I draw this analogy to life. It's a matter of focusing and keeping your priorities straight. It's not saying don't have fun. It's saying keep it in perspective of the bigger picture. Now, the next two slides were initially um, created for eighth graders, but they summarize what I told my 40 plus year old sister. And I believe it applies to everyone regardless of age. And I told her that she basically had only two choices. I, I boiled it down. I said, you have two choices, and that's it. The first is you can choose to be a passenger in your life and let your life control you, or you can be the driver. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, there we go. I'm really <laughs> challenged today. Um, you could be the driver and control your own life. The first time I heard her say that, I thought, easy for you, you're a control freak. But over time, I realized, you know, there's going to be a lot of things in my life I can't control, but I can control how I react to all of those things. And I want all of you to think of all the times you could have quit. Think of all the excuses you could have used for not doing something, but you kept going. When there were roadblocks, you found other ways. How many in, in, the, in this uh, group of graduates, how many of you are first generation college graduates? See a lot of hands go up. Your trailblazers in your family, your role models, as Red mentioned, I mean, think about the ripple effect of what you're doing. And for everyone here who's graduating today, whether college was immediately after high school, whether it was during high school for the dual credit, whether you delayed it, whether it was a weekend program. You have already proven your drivers. You've proven you are strong. You've proven you are driven. The key is to stay in the driver's seat and not coast along. I was not a good student. This was the straight A one. But I was hungry for knowledge and I still am. Did I ever think I would ever do anything in the education world? No. Criminal justice world? Oh, you're kidding. Give me a commencement speech? No way. But we never know where our lives are gonna take us. So what are my parting words for you today? Take a deep breath, hold on to the steering wheel, and throttle on. And I'm warm and fuzzy, so I'm just going to say congratulations to all of you. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to invite Dr. Christina Ponce, our Executive Vice President, to come forward with an announcement. Thank you, Red and Black, for your insightful speech and advice for our graduates about how to turn a problem into an opportunity. Lee College would like to thank you for improving the lives of others through financial literacy, and today we would like to honor you by establishing an endowed student scholarship in your names to help support students attend Lee College for years to come. Thank you.
now my pleasure to invite to the podium Dr. Donetta Sushan, our Vice President of Student Affairs, who will recognize several outstanding students among our graduates today and the awards and honors that they have achieved. Dr. Sushon. Good afternoon. Board of Regents, President Brown, honored guest, faculty members, family, students, friends, and candidates for graduation. It is my pleasure to present an outstanding group of students to you today. First, in accord with Lee College tradition, we recognize the students who will graduate today with the highest grade point averages. To be eligible for this distinction, students must earn associate degrees from Lee College and must complete at least 50% of the coursework for their degrees at Lee College. Today, we recognize those students who completed the requirements for associate degrees with a perfect 4.0. Students will be recognized or were recognized at both ceremonies. As I call your name, please stand if you are present at this ceremony. Gloria Contreras. <laughs> Catherine Ann Jacoby. And Avia Perry. Lee College awards scholarships to some of its best students so they can continue their education at transfer institutions. These scholarships, which have a combined value of more than $6,000, demonstrate this community's and this college's commitment to higher education. Please stand as I call your name if you're present at this ceremony. The oldest of the awards and scholarships given to Lee College graduates are the Gertrude Teeter and the Walter Rendell Scholarships. The Gertrude Teeter Scholarship is conferred each year on the top female graduate, and the Walter Rondell Scholarship is conferred on the top male recipient. I am pleased to announce that this year's Gertrude Teeter Award goes to Avia Peria. This morning, we awarded the Walter Rendell Scholarship to Adrian Touchstone. <laughs> Avia is also the recipient of the American Association of University Women Scholarship, too. And the Kenneth Marshall Scholarship is awarded to Robert Cruz, who is majoring in computer science. Is Robert here? <laughs> Let's give Amy another hand, okay? <laughs> The Lee College Hall of Fame continues a tradition which recognizes students for scholarship, leadership, and service to the community and the college. The first students inducted into the Hall of Fame were selected by an anonymous faculty committee in 1936, and this process still continues today. The names of this year's inductees were first announced at our Presidential Honors Day in April. Would inductees present at this ceremony please stand as I call your name? Justin Matthews, Cynthia Pizzana, Brenna Sully, Javante Toppins Cooper, yeah. and Adrian Touchstone. Congratulations, please. Please be seated. Dr. Carl Husband, Lee College Assistant Registrar, and President Dennis Brown will present the graduates. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Dr. Sushon. Well, we have arrived at that time in the ceremony where we're going to begin recognizing our graduates. Dr. Husband, if you would begin. Will the candidates who are to receive the Associate of Arts, Associate of Arts in Teaching, Associate of Science, and Associate of Applied Science degrees, as well as certificates of completion, please rise. It's all of you guys. <laughs> President Brown, I certify to you that all of these candidates have met the criteria for the appropriate degree or certificate, and I recommend them to you. By the power vested in me by the Lee College Board of Regents in the great state of Texas, I award you the appropriate degrees and certificates of completion. Congratulations, and I've got some instructions for you. So as you come up, you're going to be handing your card to the person who will read your name. I'm going to be standing right over here to my left of the podium. I'm going to hand you one of these red little cylinders, which is your college diploma. We're going to shake hands, and the photographer is going to be standing right there, and he's going to get a great, great picture, so be sure to smile, okay? All right. Let me tell you who our readers are today. Very happy to have as our... Um, Readers, Dee Dee Griffith, Dr. Donetta Sushon, and Dr. Carolyn Lightfoot. So graduates, let's get ready. If you can wait, if you can wait till your graduate comes uh, across the stage to be able to give your waves, uh, that would be appreciative, okay? Brenna Louise Salee, magna cum laude. Daniela Marie Ramirez, magna cum laude. Avia Perry Sumakun Lobbing. <laughs> Valerie S. Horton. Cedra Jenea Adams. Maria Guadalupe Arsenault. Rebecca Arrigo. Mahala Augustine. Brad Keith Avant, Jr. Ezel Ayaya. Louis David Banyos. Henry Barrientes, summa cum laude. Sahara Pertrand. Cody Lynn Bowen.
Okay, John Brown. Paola Bruno. Dixie F. Campos. Alexandra Victoria Candelo. Wilbert Ramos Cancino. Natalie Isabel Cardell. Victoria K. Carr. Christopher Aaron Castro. Carly Cates. Adrian Cedillo Cum Laude. Arturo Esteban Chanix. Jacqueline Carolina Chen. Alexis Cisneros Estrada. Gabelle Cisneros. Patricia Clark. Stephanie Raquel Clark. Chelsea Paige Clausen. Jeremy Hunter Claypool. Gloria Contreras, summa cum laude. Gustavo Daniel Contreras. Morgan Danielle Contreras. Brandon A. Cooper, cum laude. Joni Nicole Cooper. Rebecca Ann Corona. Juan A. Casillo, Travis Allen Coslow, Adamia, Adamia Brene Coverson. Shailene Marie Dargan. Jolyn Doucette. Jail Simone Davis.
Zion S. Diggles. Damian Dunn. Andre Shaw Edwards, Jr. John Michael Edwards. Marion Meshek Evert. Patrick Albert Fernandez. David Flores. Christian Armando Flores, summa cum laude. Tanya Galvez. Matthew Joseph Jurisco, cum laude. Paola L. Garibay, magna cum laude. Megan Ashley Gary. Daisy Karina Gonzalez, magna cum laude. George Manuel Gonzalez. Nicholas Leston Gordon. Jose Luis Gutierrez, Jr. Nidia Gutierrez. Sandra Gutierrez. Grant Daniel Harbor. Reagan Lafond Hargis. Jamie Hargrave. Monica Haro. Elia Hernandez. Itzu Hernandez. Stephen Michelle Hernandez. Juliana? Juliana? Juliana Hernandez. Crystal Hicks. Kristen Nicole Hoover. Ophelia Hudson.
Catherine Ann Jacoby, summa cum laude. John T. James. Yanni Esther James. Juniper Jinko, two degrees, magna cum laude. Rock Johnson. Shannon Bohannon Johnson. Kayla Gabrielle Jolly. Elizabeth Ann Jones. Ashley King. Jennifer Glenn Lambright. Sean Quay Danette Landry. Karen Legro, cum laude. Jalisa Michael Lewis. <laughs> Tiffany Marie Lewis. <laughs> Kenny Maurizio Lima. Sheena Ira Lintow. Deborah Joyce Long, summa cum laude. Rosalba Lopez. Bradlin Louise Mattier. Brenda Medellin. Juan Medina. Claudia Mendoza Alonso. Daisy Sabrina Mendoza. Jared Kendall Merendino Cum Laude. April Miranda. Sergio Luis Morales, two degrees. Desiree. Mercedes Desiree Molina. Rolando Montez. Jessica Morales. Siobhan Kathleen Morales, cum laude. Ulisa Moreno Pulido.
Brooke Elizabeth Morgan. Lindsay Jasmine Morgan. Casey Nicole Maureen. Leanne Summer Moser. Orion Munoz. Cameron Neal. Chance Michael Nerf. Diazlin Estela Ortuno, cum laude. Myra Paloma, cum laude. Tenzil Patel. Hilu Patino. Leah Lynette Payne. Thank you. Everardo Paris. Saluma Paris. Liberty Ann Perry. Jennifer Denise Pastina. Andre Pierce. Eshnell K. Polimus. Caitlin Jasmine Polimus. Julian Zachary Powell. Jennifer Lauren Ray. Carabelle Rivas. Brenda Raw. Christina Nicole Rodriguez. Jasmine Rodriguez. Kiara Rodriguez. Michelle Rodriguez. Amber Jean Ross. Shauna Michelle Roth. Carol Sagostaki. Catalina Lopez Sagan. Scott Shealy. Steven Silva.
Kaylee Michelle Slack, cum laude. April Don Smith, magnum cum laude. Ashley Smith. Bernice Joanna Sosa. Taylor Faye Stitcher. Savannah Ruth Stevener, magnum cum laude. Avian Ashante Street. Jonathan Mercey Tejeda. Javante Thomas Cooper. Okay. Sarah Halinda Tran, magnum cum laude. Jacqueline Renee Tyler. Luis Ernesto Valadez. Elaine Brennan Valdez. Adriana Valencia. Carmen Veronica Valencia, magnum cum laude. Abigail Ali Vasquez. Edward Vasquez, cum laude. Alejandro Amy Vega. Cassandra De Ventura. Austin Isaac Wade. Shelby Nicole Wade. Shinoka Monet Washington. Ding Wool. Candice Lachey Williams, cum laude. Regine Williams. Roy L. Young. Ernesto Isaac Isnaga, cum laude. Julia Zanette Zamaripa. Zaraga. Emily Zaraga. Alonzo Zapata.
Maria D. Zuniga. That's it. Let's give all of our graduates a wonderful applause. I'm sure you've all heard the expression, you can't teach a dog new tricks. Well, believe it or not, they taught me how to tweet. So graduates, get your biggest smile on because I'm going to take your picture and before long it's going to be out on social media. All right, I have almost as many followers as Taylor Swift. I have 85. If you'd like to help me get to the 50 million that she has, if you're a tweeter, at D Brown, D B R O N, Prez, P R E Z, at D Brown Prez. Help me out and I'll beat her. I promise you I'll be more than she is one day. Probably not. Very important part of our commencement ceremonies has to do, oh, someone just joined my tweetum. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> oh my, they're coming fast and furious, wonderful. One important part of our graduation has to do with what's on your mortarboard. It's called your tassel. So if I'd like to ask all of our graduates to stand Make sure that your tassel is on the right side of your mortarboard. Very traditional across commencement ceremonies throughout our nation. As graduates now of Lee College, you may move your tassel from the right to the left. Graduates, you may be seated. I think everybody knows that tomorrow's a very important day. Today was pretty important, but tomorrow's also a very special day. So I'd like to ask if we could have all of the mothers that are in our arena today to please stand so that we can congratulate you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Lee College, we wish you all the happiest of Mother's Day tomorrow. I would like now to invite up Avia Annette Perry, who will do our benediction. Avia? as we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for being the light that guides us and the hand that directs us on our path. As we continue to seek and follow the plan you have for us, may our ears clearly hear your voice, our eyes see your hand working on our behalf, even in trivial things, and our hearts know that success follows us when we trust in the guidance of your more than capable hands. Thank you for the wonderful faculty, staff, and graduates of Lee College, and for our families who so graciously supported us throughout our leadership, instruction, and education at Lee College. Heavenly Father, I would like to close this prayer with a special blessing over your people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. 
the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Avia, thank you very much. Lee College has a very special closing to its commencement ceremonies. I've never seen it before, and it's something that when I arrived here five years ago, I thought was so very, very special. And it's called the Walk of Honor. So I would ask all of our folks that are in the stands today, if you will remain seated, what we're going to do is we're going to have our Grand Marshal, Dr. Adams, lead the platform guests out and then we're going to have our faculty join us, and we're going to form a line. And then students, oh, graduates, we're going to come through one. We're going to come through one final time, and we're going to give you a rounding rouse of applause and send you off to the future that you have planned for yourselves. So, one more time, graduates, congratulations.
Thank <laughs> you. 